NHK has obtained new video footage showing the severely damaged reactor buildings at Fukushima Daiichi uh, nearly three months after the accident. Workers engaged in restoring cooling systems are based in this quake-proof building at the plant. This is the emergency response room on the second floor. This video was taken by workers there late last month. TEPCO employees and other workers put on protective clothing and masks before doing repair work. Amid fears of being exposed to high levels of radiation, more than 2,000 workers are battling every day to contain the nuclear crisis. Here we see a severely damaged reactor building. A hydrogen explosion occurred at the number one reactor building on March 12th, blowing off the concrete outer casing and laying bare the steel framework. Radiation monitors alert workers to high levels of radioactivity. This is the number three reactor building. It suffered a hydrogen explosion after the number one reactor. The upper portion of the roof collapsed and little is left of its original shape. The building of the number four reactor was also blown apart. In the center of the screen, we can see steam rising from the left side of the green object. This image shows debris thought to be from the explosions littered on the rooftop of the building on the right side and the nearby slope. A special machine to pump in large amounts of water was brought in. Water injection is being carried out using its long arm. At the facilities alongside the shoreline, pipes and fences were completely destroyed, apparently by the tsunami. Workers pile sandbags along the road to counter another possible tsunami. It's been almost three months since the nuclear accident, but there is no sign of stabilizing the situation. But there is no sign of stabilizing the situation. But there is no sign of stabilizing the situation.
Tokyo Electric Power Company has increased the transfer of radioactive water in the number two reactor building to a nuclear waste facility at the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. This is to prevent contaminated water from overflowing. More than 105,000 tons of contaminated water is thought to have accumulated in the basements of the reactor and turbine buildings. An additional 500 tons or so flows into the basements every day as a result of the injection of water into the reactors for cooling. On Saturday, TEPCO increased the water transfer by about 1,500 tons to a facility for nuclear waste. Because of this, the rise in the level of contaminated water stopped. The company will start filtering highly radioactive water starting June 15th. It also plans to set up tanks to store 10,000 tons of water in mid-August. The chairperson of Japan's Nuclear Safety Commission, Haruki Madarame, has told NHK that engineering guidelines for nuclear plants should be thoroughly revised. He says they should take into account the possibility of long-term power failure. The total blackout caused major damage at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant after the March 11th earthquake and tsunami. The guidelines were last modified by the commission in 1990. They state that long-term power failure can be ignored as emergency backup systems are expected to supply electricity. Complacency about blackouts has been identified as one of the causes of the Fukushima accident. The guidelines clearly state that a long-term power failure can be disregarded. Experts ignored the explanation for a long time until the accident. He emphasized that the guidelines should have included the worst-case scenario. The guidelines were not revised as experts are a self-contained group and tend to avoid vigorous discussions and uncomfortable subjects. Human error caused the Fukushima accident. The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it will try to reduce humidity inside the number two reactor building by opening the doors. Tokyo Electric Power Company says humidity and high radiation levels mean workers can work only for short periods of time, even if they wear protective gear. TEPCO says it plans to reduce the amount of radioactive materials inside the reactor building and then open the doors to lower the humidity now at 99.9%. It's possible that radioactive substances will leak out of the number two reactor building once the doors are open. TEPCO says it will make a final decision after carefully assessing the levels of radioactivity. Work to fix a water level gauge was supposed to begin as early as mid-June to help ensure stable cooling. But there may be a delay if the company cannot reduce the humidity. Two workers at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant have been treated for dehydration at a hospital. In all, with nine workers getting heat stroke, Tokyo Electric Power Company says it will take more measures to ensure the health of workers at the plant. TEPCO said the two workers were installing cables near a nuclear waste disposal facility. The company said they were sent to a hospital in Iwaki City, Fukushima Prefecture, where they were treated for dehydration. TEPCO said no radioactivity was detected, but one worker was advised to stay in hospital for about a week and the other to stay home for three days. 
The company said it is advising workers to wear vests containing cooling gels underneath the gear that protects against radiation, but that one of the two workers was not wearing a vest. As the weather becomes hotter, the working environment at the plant will become tougher for workers wearing protective suits. TEPCO plans to improve working conditions by setting up new rest areas at the site and securing 2,500 cooling vests. The China Syndrome. It's about people, people who lie, and people faced with the agony of telling the truth. People like Kimberly Wells, a television reporter paid to smile, not to think. A few words about a veterinarian who makes house calls on sick fish. Or is it aquarium calls? Richard Adams, a cameraman who never learned how to play by the rules. Wait till you get in that other room, get that radiation all over that cute little body. Jack Goodell, an engineer who knows too much to tell the truth. In anything that man ever does, there's some element of risk, right? Well, that's why we have what we call defense in depth. And cares too much to lie. No accident. It will start with a tremor in a nuclear power plant. Where it will end will depend on three people. I would say you're probably lucky to be alive. The same for the rest of Southern California. Jane Fonda. Let's face it, you didn't get this job because of your investigative abilities. Kimberly, don't fight it. Jack Lemon. There was a vibration. Michael Douglas. I don't know that accident is the right word. Accident is the right word. The China Syndrome. The harder they try, the more resistance they meet. They've got their own security man. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you want me to make it any clearer? The closer they get, no. the more threatening it becomes. No. The China no. Syndrome. No. Today, only a handful of people know what it really means. And they're scared. Everybody keep your strength! Everybody keep your strength! Soon, you will know. The China Syndrome.